Oba Ewai o Gidigan o posisi na mudagbe o mo die mi na gbo kan yo re e ku e mi na bi o Gidigan the second in taking a title of the Oba of Benin is spiritual it is not religious it is spiritual it is just the crown prince and his God that understands, only they that understand what happens there. That he chose the name Ey II is a reaffirmation and a confirmation of the fact that he is the reincarnate of Oba Ey the I. He's the one that performed it, or is the naked that performed him to be the second, uh, uh, the second? It's a spiritual matter. Oh, okay. It is a spiritual matter. How that is done, mm. no man on earth can tell. Even the crown prince, before becoming Oba, cannot tell what is to happen there. But when he enters into the sacred grove, to meet with the divinities, to meet with the divinities, to take a name, it is left with just him and God Almighty, who brings the name to him. So nobody knows how it comes. If any man tells you, I know how the Oba of Benin takes a name, it's a fa 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 foul. It's a big liar. So they don't say the name of your father. Instead, nope. they, they uh, assign a name to themselves based on spiritual power. The name is not assigned to himself, by himself, or by anybody. That is why we say, Isaac Morioba Odo The Obar of Bini is not made, he's born. He's not created. He's born. From the day he's born, he's over. We all know. He's destined, predestined. He's destined, predestined, and foredestined to be over. It cannot be changed. Unlike so many other kingdoms, even the British kingdom, we are not too sure now who is going to be the next king or queen of England. But we know our own, we know. That is why it remains the oldest surviving kingdom and the greatest kingdom ever on earth. So, Oba Ewai the second, O Gidigan, O Posisi Naimudegbe, O Modiaimi, Naibokonyore, the one that is heard of so much and yet not seen by man. The king that is referred to as Uku Akbolo Polo, the king greater than kings. These appellations don't just come because people want to talk. He is called Ogidigan because of the things he has done with his hands. So the first uh, Obai Wari, uh, the Obai Wari the first, uh, was the Oba of Bini in what year? In 1440 AD. He ruled the Benin Kingdom for how many years before? He ruled for about uh, 40 years. And we know this one is going to rule far, far, far more than that. Ogidigan the first was appellated with the title Ogidigan because he conquered 201 towns and villages to the left of Benin. That is to the west of Benin, from Benin to Ghana. And from Benin to the east to the Cameroons. He went further to the north and conquered right to the river Niger. Is that why they, 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 are, they called him the Ogidigan? That is why he was now appellated Ogidigan, which means the great, the conqueror. He refused, he refused to conquer the Oyo Empire. He left Oyo Empire 
because in his time there were only two empires here this side of of the Niger Benin Empire and Ojo Empire but he left Benin Empire because the uh, he left Ojo Empire because they are of the same father Oromia who was the first Obar of Benin when he left Benin because of language problem he stopped in Oyo to create a kingdom. Oh, so he left to create a kingdom in Oyo. In Oyo. But not uh, in Oyoruba. No. Okay. Well, in know. Oyo. Meanwhile, their own father was in Ife oh. as Odudua. Oh. Right? So, since the father was still alive as Odudua oh. in Ife, there was no need going back there. He has already been king here. Obagwabadia. Obagwabadia. A king is no subject of another king. So when he got back to Ife, he discovered that his father was still there. He cannot now become a, a, a subject again. A king is no subject, is not one king is not a subject of another king. So he moved out to form his own kingdom in Oyo. From Oyo, his own son went to form the kingdom of Ilorin and some other places. So, Ogidigan we have today may not have conquered towns and villages, but he has conquered minds. He has conquered governments. He has done things from the day of his coronation, October 20th, 2016. He made a proclamation that became law. What is the, what is the law now? That from that day, mm. the issue of community development association menace in Edo State, in Edo State mm. is wiped out. And I tell you right now mm. that other states in Nigeria mm. are queuing behind Edo State on the way, on the issue of CDAs. The CDA that became a menace, mm. according to His Majesty Oba mm. Ewai II, mm. CDA, Community Development Association, as an association, mm. was not wrong. But those, Chairman CDA, mm. Secretary CDA, they now turned it into youth association to oppress the elders of the villages. The less uh, powerful. Yes. They now turned every village into a community. They, when people go to buy land, whether for uh, agricultural purposes, for buildings, or whatever, they no longer go to the elders. They have to discuss with the youth. So immediately he has quenched that. So the youth were, you know, possessing a form of power. They, they arrogated mm. powers that mm. were not their own yeah. to themselves. So, like we say in Bini, it is the gathering of elders that you refer to, not gathering of, of chicks and chickens. So, and again, after that, the issue of the city. Every time, like every few years, 10, 15 years, the Ijaws always like want to come up with some form of aggravations or the other. They tried it now with Obai Y the second. Gidigbo, Gidigbo, when I'm away, when I'm away, so where I am. Obai Y has his own way of doing things. First of all, let us not forget that he's a diplomat, an ambassador of so many years to so many countries. So he understands international politics and diplomacy. Yes, I read his uh, history, uh, mostly his academic history. He studied in London and also in the in, US. In the United States, yes. Now, I'll tell you, as of today, there is a, public, a publication in the Vanguard of the Ejors begging, pledging their loyalty and allegiance to Oba Ewai II. 
I taba, I go back to the I go back to the What exactly are they demanding from the Benin Kingdom? They said they are the owners of Benin. Ah, wa. Really? So, but today, if today, the 21st day of February 2018, they are begging. They are already begging His Majesty, say, please forgive us. Because a lot of terrible things are already happening to them. But they are our own. They are our brothers. We, we, we don't want them to die. What is their justification of trying to claim their Benekedon as theirs? You see, at times, if you allow your houseboy to stay too long in the house, unknown to his own grandchildren, they may think he's a co-owner of the house. That is the problem there. So, Obai Wawgirigan, the second, is uh, just starting, and we wish him so many more years on the throne. Just, in good health. He just became an Oba in 2015. Right? 2016. 16, 2016. Yes. He's just starting. But from what he has done so far, the appellation Ogidiga is appropriate. Yes. Come to Benin. Look at the palace of the Oba of Benin. You will see a masterpiece of architecture. Then, if you are privileged to go inside, you will know what obtains that you will know that yeah this is a man that has widely traveled okay is he trying to um portray the legacy of uh, oba and Wari the first for trying to protect the Benin people uh, yes now let us make a little allusion maybe Compar a comparison com yeah comparison yeah Ewai the first was a warrior and conqueror. He moved into towns and villages, conquered them, and nursed them, turned the kingdom into an empire. Ewai the second, immediately he came on board as Obar of Benin, the 40th Obar of Benin. He stretched the olive branch to all the traditional rulers in Nigeria, that we are one and the same of the royal bloodline. Let us be together as brothers so that we can help the government of the day, whether in our different states or at the federal, so that this country can be a better place for us all. That is expansionism. That is powerful. That yes. Is power. That is what we need in Nigeria. That and that is, is why, that is why during the coronation of Obai Y II, virtually all the known and important traditional rulers in this country came. You saw the, the, the display of the Oni of Ife. You saw the, the, the Doba brought in by the Sultan of Sokoto and uh, uh, the, that other Emma. You saw the different from uh, the Shakiri, uh, Urobo, Isoko, all of them, you saw how they came. Because now they know there, this is a pivot, a fulcrum that is ready, a, a, a willing tool to put all of them together. Okay. Now they are all thinking alike, helping the government. So um, is there any ongoing project between him or collaboration between him and the governor of Edo State to develop or regulate these uh, states? Beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Now let us go into agriculture. We, I would say, are very fortunate now in Edo State to have a governor who can think along the line of the Oba. When the Oba came in, he said he was going to re-establish the royal market. A Kiai is is the is going on now? It's a project that is ongoing. They are preparing the place. It's going to be around uh, in some different areas, like in Upper Sokomba, it's going to be there. Around Dawson Road, it's going to be there. It's going to be every Sunday market. Wow! Nothing will be sold there more than two hundred naira. 
nothing will be sold more than 200 naira. So the market will be named after him. It's a Kiba Yes. Wow, wonderful. That one is there. I love that. So it's nothing will be sold there for more than 200 naira. It's like it's a dollar store in our country. We good. have a market where you don't sell anything more than three dollars. So it's like a dollar, exactly. dollar store, something like exactly. that. Exactly, the dollar store. Exactly. <laughs> so this one, <coughs> if the tuber of yam is as big as a full grown man, it's 200 naira. The, the modalities that are, what, what we say, ongoing now that we are, uh, the planning that is going on, we are planning now, strategizing on how to effect it so that people will not come and buy here and go and resell in another market. For uh, profit training. Good. That is the plan that is, as soon as it is, you know, put together properly, the market will take off. Then, Uboba, the issue of Uboba, the Oba farm. We grew up to know that in every village there is Uboba. People farm on the Oba's farmland. Bring some percentage, a greater percentage of what comes from the farmland to the Oba in Benin. And then the other one will be for their own uh, uh, pay, their own work. That one is back again. This is just the planting season. And people are already, you know, moving into it. And the state government is also moving into towards that direction, helping from the government angle, from the Benin traditional angle, putting all these things together. So the, there is a great collaboration between the palace and the government house for the benefit of the Edo people and mankind. So, Obai Wai, the second, Ogidiga, is doing great. In just one year, he has, he done, has done so much. Yeah. Export processing free zone. Okay. It's ex export processing free zone. Where they bring in their products, you know, like, like a tax free, uh, what do they call it in Europe and the Americas now? You know, export free zone. Yeah, export free zone. So that this food can be cheap. That is it, a no tariff. Good. Okay. Food can be cheap yeah. and. So they, you can be importing, they can import things. You can import, you can export. Wow. But right now we are developing our agriculture so much that by this time next year we'll be exporting. Exporting out, exporting of, the out of the country. We're exporting fresh food to. America to Canada to Europe everywhere fresh food so the project is ongoing it's now. ongoing I give God Almighty the glory and all thanks to the Obar of Benin that I have been exceptionally privileged to be on the train of the Oba in all these travels in Ife he told the Ife people we are kids and kin. We are brothers from the same stock. Oduduwa, who left Benin in 1120 AD, became a nobleman here because of the promise and the oath he took before the Okaudioma and the other people that gave him freedom, gave him his life that he will never step his feet into Benin again. He sent his son, Oromiya, whom we call Omononya. In Yoruba, we say Oromiya. Now, he, became, he came to Benin and became Obar of Benin. Gave birth to Eweka the first. From there, the dynasty started up to what we have today. It's, it is the same line. But I must be quick to say that the line of Odudua, Odua Nife, or Balifon Nife, is not the line of the Oni. I stand to be proved wrong. 
the Oni was is merely a priest that looks after the shrine of Odua. And that is why they call him Oni. Oh, Nyorisha. It is not your own from the gods. But let us leave that. That is their own history. And then we visited, yeah, just to say thank you to the Sultan of Sokoto who performed beautifully well during, before, during, and after the coronation. For the first time in the history of the Sultanate, they took the royal doba out of Sokoto to perform the doba in Benin for the oba of Benin. Emi hiaya gioba se gbe wai. E wai, the great of Gidiga. So then, few days, few weeks back, we were in worry. Worry was a gog. Let me tell you a few things that happened in different places. When we got to Ife, before then, there was a lot of storm, people, aggravations, a lot of unrest. As soon as His Majesty stepped his feet, his, his, his vehicle drove into Ife. The people of Ife testified that peace was restored in every home in Ife. Even when we from there moved to Shogo to see the governor, the governor testified. We were in Sokoto. We were in Sokoto, they said, for a very long time. The sun in Sokoto was burning, was killing. People were getting affected with meningitis. But the five days or so we spent in Sokoto, there was relative and absolute calm of what we call a decaladera. No sun, no rain. It was cool. We were in Ekboma. His Majesty, in Ekboma, as soon as His Majesty stepped out of the vehicle, the sun and the moon appeared together. From there, His Majesty went to Auchi. We were in Auchi. They said for over a year there was no rain in Auchi. As soon as His Majesty entered Auchi, there was heavy downpour. I sat Murioba. The Oba of Benin is not just an Oba. He's a God representative on earth. Oba Nusaya Ziegbe Yagbon. That is what he is. And Ewai the second has proved it beyond all things. Yeah, we can see that. We can see that with the, the proclamation. Even the recent one was like a, a rainbow after the rain in yes. the kingdom. That's what I call it. I call yeah. it a rainbow. A rainbow after, after the rain. Yeah. Yeah. That's like true. It, it brought peace uh, to the Benin Peace. Kingdom. Look at the issue of the CDA. Whoever comes out now to... Nobody, no chairman now. Former chairman, they call themselves. If you even call them, ah, chairman. You say, Lao, Ibu Waro. <laughs> I'm not a chairman, no. Everyone, they, everyone has put himself in the proper perspective, proper position. Look at the issue of illegal migration. Yes, a few people will still be stubborn, but they can no longer do it in Benin. They can still take some of our Benin girls, they take them to Imo, they take them to Anambra, they take them to Abuja, they take them to different places to take them away. But they forget that everywhere that was Benin Kingdom, Benin Empire, mm -hmm. under the Emperor, Ewai the first. Not damn way. Or I ain't where. Or I'll be more. Or I'll be you. I'll be you. I'll be here. You know, 
and it just became uh, an orba in 2016. Uh, 16. 16. Right. Uh, Okay. Which means October, October 20, 2016. So what are we expecting in future from him? Can we get a hint? A hint of what he's planning to do for the Benin Kingdom? I cannot say. Even the Yasa of Benin or the Uliya of Benin cannot say. Nobody can tell the mind of the Oba. The Oba is a god. He wakes up, he has, he communes with his ancestors, he communes with the supreme deity, Usanogu Dua, and he deals with his people in the best way possible he can. Nobody can say, this is what EYA will do today. We are tied to Fagboa. He's an oracle. Yeah.